sorry I've been away for so long, but I've been busy bathing in the salty and ever so slightly caffeinated tears of every douche bro in the manosphere who ever said, go woke, go broke. As Greta Gerwig's testament to woke feminism skyrockets its way up the all-time highest grossing movies list. It's in the top 25 as of this recording and the sixth highest that wasn't part of a series. But alas, as much as feminism dominates the box office, misogyny still runs the fucking world. So we'll turn our attention to that. And we'll start in Israel, where ultra-Orthodox lawmakers are trying to expand the power of all male religious courts and bar women from many public spaces that might also contain men. Even without legal authority, sexist zealots emboldened by Netanyahu's rhetoric are just taking power and forcibly barring women from public transportation and shit. And every indication is that this kind of thing is set to get worse. Now, to be clear, Israel's Supreme Court has ruled that it is illegal to force women to sit in separate sections on buses, trains, and airplanes. But as you know, if you've been listening long, this law is routinely ignored. On top of that, one of the biggest fights in Israeli politics is Netanyahu's effort to castrate their Supreme Court. And in order to rope in the support of these ultra-Orthodox factions, he's had to make a lot of sexist concessions. These include agreements to segregate audiences by gender at some public events and expanding the power of the aforementioned all-male rabbinical courts. And I should point out that the very political parties that are pushing for this shit don't allow women to run for office. So you can see how this shit falls in a self-reinforcing feedback loop pretty quick. I've also got a story out of India, thanks to astute listener Nick, who sent this one to scathingnews at gmail.com. Apparently, there's a staged video that's being shared around Indian social media meant to drum up prejudice against the country's Muslim minority and is specifically aimed at Muslim women. In the video, a Hindu guy supposedly thwarts a kidnapping by revealing that a woman in a burqa is actually a man in disguise. The video specifically warns viewers that there's been a rash of beburkid kidnappers and that they should be suspicious of anybody wearing one. And look, I'm no fan of the fucking burqa. There are all kinds of reasons you should kind of shudder when you see one. But putting this kind of bullshit message out into the tinderbox of religious tension in India right now is almost certainly going to have deadly consequences. And like in Israel, the sexist religious zealots are bolstered by a leader that has no qualms at all about exploiting that tension to drum up support for his base. But despite the international flavor of this segment, it's not like we need to go far from home to find sexism. So my final story comes out of the state of Texas. And like pretty much every story out of Texas, it's a sad one. It's about a prison guard named Celia Issa, who was seven months pregnant when she started having labor pains at work. She told her boss that she needed to go to the hospital, but he wouldn't let her leave. According to the lawsuit she filed against the state, he told her she was lying and just wanted to go home. Now, eventually, two and a half hours after she first alerted her boss, she was allowed to leave. She drove to the hospital as quickly as she could, where she was rushed into surgery, but it was too late. The fetus did not make it. So she sued, arguing that her boss's negligent action led directly to her miscarriage. And in defending their actions, or rather their inaction, the state of Texas is now arguing that her fetus didn't have a right to life to begin with. So yeah, arguably the most rabidly anti-abortion state in the union abandons that whole fetal personhood thing the instant it's going to inconvenience them. Just one worth keeping in mind whenever you meet a person who mistakes anti-abortion activists for people with principles. And on that important reminder, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah and Eli.